Snow Tracks is sponsored by Ski Do Snowmobiles, Yamaha revs your heart, MBRP Performance Exhaust built for the victory lap, and by iPone Lubricants, exclusively distributed by Parts Canada. The turbo snowmobile genre is spreading in model year 22. Yamaha has multiple offerings in numerous segments, as does market leader Ski Do. So what does this all mean for the snowmobile business? There are a number of interesting implications for the sport with turbocharged engines offered by three of the four OEMs. One somewhat abstract observation is this. It would seem that two-stroke power appears more or less maxed out at the 165 pony level, while only four-stroke power with turbocharged induction will make it to the 200 horsepower level. There are pretty good reasons for this reality. It is widely accepted that the ability to control vibration in a big bore twin cylinder two stroke engine is limited to about 850 cc's. Yes, a two stroke triple or a counterbalance twin would eliminate this problem. Neither of those options is particularly palatable for the OEMs. A counterbalance twin at over 850 cc's would end up being too heavy. Same goes for triple cylinder two stroke power. Along with these realities is the enormous expense to retool another two-stroke engine when the current turbocharged four-stroke platforms from Articat, Skidoo, and Yamaha can all be tweaked up to and likely beyond 200 horsepower. If I had to guess, in the future, two-stroke big bore power will have as its hallmark lightweight, while turbo power will own the max horsepower position in the market. No doubt all this sounds very speculative, and it is. However, the subject of this week's test ride will bring clarity and legitimacy to my former assumption. Yamaha has done an outstanding job of developing a turbocharged engine. The 998cc turbo utilizes three cylinders and a double overhead cam to produce a staggering claimed 180 horsepower and a tongue-in-cheek 200 horsepower if you read between the lines on Yamaha's product description pages. We do not doubt the big 998 is capable of 200 ponies and that it is a lot of power under anyone's right thumb. All the hoopla about the 998's imposing power output is the stuff that riders who ante up for this kind of snowmobile recite from memory. Strangely, after one ride on this sled, there's another important trait that surfaces. The imposing civility this horsepower-laden ride possesses is remarkable. This sophisticated engine is a prime example of Yamaha's ability to build engines that impress buyers with more than just stunning acceleration and top speed. What am I saying? From the first twist of the key, the 998 sparks to life with a mellow, rich, 120 degree firing, triple cylinder exhaust melody. No burping, sneezing, or turbo wastegate blow off explosions common to turbocharged engines. Just even, crisp throttle response that's ridiculously easy to modulate from engagement to full throttle. Why do we mention and make such a big deal about how the 998 delivers its imposing thrust? Because this sled, the LTX LE, is an all-day ride, not simply a big lake crotch rocket. The LTX LE demands little compromise as a big bore crossover ride with easy to ply, even modulation of power when the ponies are called up. Forays into deeper snow can be navigated easily using the linear delivery of power. This same even thrust production is similarly welcome on day-long trail rides. The LTX LE Sidewinder might just be my favorite Sidewinder. In as much as any Sidewinder model sold in model year 22 comes with big expectations for raw power. And we get that. I think the SRX Sidewinder makes more sense if your goal is riding at triple digits down Kevlar Lake. 
Trail riding prowess is impressive, and even forays into deep snow can be navigated successfully, respecting the fact that this is a 200 horsepower snowmobile. The compromises demanded by the SRX to achieve speedo needle bending top end are significant. The benefits of the LTX LE's dual personality are also significant in the opposite direction. Having said this, you might be wondering if the LTX Sidewinder is measurably slower than a full-on SRX. It is not. The speed acceleration penalty comes north of the C-note when the lowered SRX with its low lug one inch camo shredder comes into play. Snow Tracks is sponsored by Hercules Tire. Ride in our strength. So how good is the LTX LE as a trail sled? Our impressions after honing trails with the Sidewinder LTX LE are good. In fact, you could even say the handling and suspension are remarkable. The SR137 version of the sliding front arm rear skid has always been the best riding setup in Yamaha's fleet. The LTX LE is no exception. The sliding front arm setup works to slow down or delay suspension coupling by keeping the rear swing arm drop link off the coupler blocks in small trail chatter and lower amplitude chop. When the sliding yoke on the front torque arm locks in place, then the skid can couple up at the rear blocks and resist bottoming on bigger hits. Another advantage of the sliding front arm setup is weight transfer. Many coupled designs do a great job of preventing bottoming and absorbing trail garbage. However, they can at the same time limit weight transfer when you want to jump on the throttle. The LTX LE capably lifts its nose under hard acceleration. We would be remiss if we didn't pay homage to Yamaha's new strike skis. They are particularly effective on the Sidewinder LTX LE. Frankly, we can't believe how effective these new design skis are under a variety of trail conditions. Where Yamaha suffered from pretty profound understeer before the strike's arrival, the LTX LE now turns in with confidence-inspiring bite all the way through the center of the turn. Handlebar effort is light to moderate, while tracking is virtually dart-free. After many ski iterations from Yamaha over the past few years, the single keel, dual carbide strike is an all-round tangible improvement. Suspension performance, thanks to Fox Kashima coated QS3Rs on the front and on the rear arm, is impressive. Fox QS3s are among our most favorite shocks around here, and on the LTX LE, they're impressive. Can the Sidewinder LTX LE be improved? We think a couple tweaks would be welcome. First, we would like to see the rider's perch move forward particularly at the seat gas tank console junction, which could be achieved with a slightly denser foam, allowing for a higher or even an adjustable bar riser. This would make sitting to standing transitions significantly more fluid. As well, we would like to see the seat material a bit more grippy. The LTX LE Sidewinder is as comfortable honing mogul infested portages as it is rough bumpy trails. The QS3R dampers have a myriad of compression and rebound damping adjustments. A gnarly and nicely shaped front bumper is an LTX LE exclusive. The LTX LE comes with a soft tunnel bag that's completely integrated into the seat and tunnel. It's handsome and offers copious storage. All Sidewinders use the same dual digital gauge cluster, which has been around for some time. Thankfully, they provide lots of info and are rider configurable to your liking. The left side handlebar switch gear was introduced a couple seasons back. The cluster is nicely thought out and provides on the fly toggling of the digi gauge cluster. You can also use the buttons on the gauges to access more info. Here's our take. If ultimate power and speed is something you can't do without, but versatility is just as important, then the Sidewinder LTX LE deserves your attention. Trail Tech is sponsored by Princess Auto. Make it work. Whenever we talk about increasing traction by using Bite Harder's stud and carbide sharpening tools, we're always showing you big horsepower, big iron sleds. But the reality is these tools will work on any snowmobile that you want them to. And to prove that point, I've plowed an ice course to compare pre-sharpened to post-sharpened handling. 
and I'm doing so on a Polaris Indy Evo. You know, the little 550 midsize sled that's able to transform with the Evolution kit we showed you a few years back? Well, we have that same Indy here with us today, and that'll be the basis for the test. My plan is to go out onto the ice and get a feel for how two seasons of riding and abuse on the current carbides and studs has worn them down and deteriorated the precision traction and steering we once benefited from. I feel that the Indy Evo is a great sled to show you this on because it's not just great for new riders, it's also great for those who are trying to learn to ride better. And icy scenarios is one place that'll either cause you to have confidence or complete panic. And while I may have a little more experience on sleds, it doesn't matter if it's a 550 midsize Evo or a full size 850 or turbo sled. The lack of sharpness on carbides and studs in icy situations will play out much the same. And right away, it's evident that we have lost much of our steering on the front end of the Evo. It really struggles to get through the corners. And while any sled will have some issues on glare ice like this, the lack of any control lets me know that there's just no edge left on the carbides at all. Having a battery powered, handy, high RPM rotary tool means that we can sharpen the carbides anywhere that we are. So we're gonna do just that and then see how the steering changes out on the track. Now you're gonna have to decide what tool from Bite Harder you wanna use. Either the standard series that'll be perfect for the majority of riders using an electric drill or the professional version that requires at least 10,000 RPM from either a grinder like this or an air powered tool. The standard version will do all you need for the average rider, while the professional series is more designed for the hardcore enthusiast or shops looking to sharpen high volumes of carbide runners. The process is quick and you'll see noticeable changes in the carbide sharpness in just a few passes. Now with the carbides sharpened up nicely, let's head back out onto the course and see exactly how the Indy Evo handles. Steering? Yeah, it's noticeably sharper. I can actually get around a sweeping corner without drifting outside, and when I need to make a directional change through the S-bends, the sled will course correct, which I wouldn't do with the dull runners. I know I've improved the handling massively on icy situations, and it only took a few minutes and didn't require me throwing out my dull, but still sharpenable carbides. Now our Indy Evo is equipped with studs as well, and Bite Harder has the tools to fix those up also, because just like carbide runners, studs also lose their bite. Having the front end sharpness really exaggerates the lack of grip I'm getting from the studs out back. Sure, it's better than the track without studs, but I can tell on acceleration that it's just nowhere like it once was with new studs, and especially noticeable is stopping. The sled now glides way farther than it once did. And the answer is once again able to be done in your driveway or shop. Much like the carbide runner sharpening products from Bite Harder, the stud tools are offered in standard for use with an electric drill, or Pro Series for use with a 10,000 RPM and above rotary tool. Like the runner tools, the Pro Series is designed for extreme enthusiasts or folks with big fleets of sleds or shops looking to offer stud sharpening. The standard series will work wonders for the majority of enthusiasts using an electric drill. Each stud only requires a quick run around the outside and you'll see a hugely noticeable difference bringing them to a sharp 60 degree tip. Now with both the carbides and studs completely sharpened up, it's time to go out and test them on the icy course. Really, there's no comparison. The sled not only takes off with authority, it grips way better in the rear end through the corners, and also has stopping power like I felt when I first installed the studs on the Evo. If I were a new or inexperienced rider, this would be the difference between feeling out of control and building confidence because even though you've encountered ice, the sled still offers a level of control. As you've witnessed, maintaining balance control is made easy with Bite Harder sharpening tools, and they suggest you sharpen your carbides every two to 300 miles and your studs once per season. And really, whether you're a new or veteran rider, feeling confident on your sled keeps you focused on having fun and logging miles, and not on what might happen if you experience an icy situation. Snow Tracks has been sponsored by Polaris, Think Outside, Yamaha, Revs Your Heart, the regions of Quebec by the sea, discover our ride ideas, FXR Racing, maximum versatility for all conditions. And by Arctic Cat Snowmobiles.
Of all the manufacturers in the snowmobile industry right now, Skidoo has the most diverse lineup by a long shot. A full lineup of two-stroke engines, a full lineup of four-stroke engines, and multiple platforms for each is proof that Skidoo is attempting to ensure there's a product for you, no matter what your needs and wants are. One of the most popular platforms in their lineup always has been the Renegade. It offers improved ride quality and traction, as well as milder handling characteristics. We've tested just about every Renegade model Skidoo has ever built, save for the newest 900 Turbo R. Today, I have almost identical Renegade XRS sleds, both with smart shocks. The only difference between them is that one is an 850 E-Tech two-stroke and the other is an Ace 900 Turbo R four-stroke. I thought it'd be interesting to include both in this test because they're identical in the chassis and features categories. It should give us all a good understanding of how the different engines affect the ride, handling, and overall fun factor of a Renegade XRS. Before I go any further though, I wanna talk briefly about one very interesting feature they both have. Smart Shocks is an industry first, and I have no doubt it's going to change how you ride a snowmobile that is so equipped. It allows you to simply forget about adjusting your suspension as conditions change. The only involvement you need to have is selecting which mode you're in. Once selected, the Smart Shocks electronic control module reads inputs from numerous sensors on the sled and on the shocks themselves, then automatically adjusts damping based on the info it's collected. The system is not considered fully active, which would indicate that it's actually reading the terrain before you ride over it and factoring in predictive adjustments. Smart Shocks is semi-active, meaning it's instantaneously adjusting based on inputs as they happen. Does Smart Shocks work? Absolutely. The base comfort setting provides an incredibly smooth ride while also helping to limit body roll in the corners. The sport mode is definitely stiffer, yet still provides good ride quality with even better chassis control. Now, in my opinion, Sport Plus is way too stiff for the majority of fast, aggressive riding I'll ever do, which highlights the only complaint I have about the SmartShock system. The three settings are pre-programmed and are not user adjustable. This means that if any of the settings are too extreme in either direction, they are essentially wasted. I'd like to see Skidoo include some sort of tuning option so that I can soften up Sport Plus just a bit and take advantage of the system to its full potential. The rest of the XRS package on both sleds is as it always has been. R850 has a taller windshield and mirrors that are not supplied from the factory. Otherwise, it is identical to the 900 Turbo R. Now let's talk a little bit about these two motors. Now there's really not much to say about the 850 because it is how it's always been, which is to say that it's got incredible power, it runs smooth as butter, and it's really easy on your wallet at the pumps. It makes a claimed 165 horsepower. The 900 Turbo R is the newest engine in Skidoo's lineup and is also the most powerful at 180 horsepower. Skidoo has done a fantastic job packaging this engine in such a way that it doesn't make the fuel sled cumbersome up front. We've pretty much stopped talking about the four-stroke weight penalty these days because everybody already knows that it exists and there's no point in flogging a dead horse. Plus, people who are buying four-strokes are more than happy to make that compromise to get excellent four-stroke reliability and economy. However, when you put these two sleds side by side, it really is the biggest thing you notice between them. Obviously, the turbo's awesome boosted power is impressive, but it doesn't really make the 850 E-Tech feel unimpressive at all. We're talking about 15 horsepower here. When you factor in power to weight, the difference gets even smaller. With that said, there is no question the turbo does pull harder and put up higher top speed numbers. So if ultimate acceleration and top speed is what you're looking for, the turbo is definitely the sled you want. The new throttle is also a godsend and offers a thumb to throttle body connection that feels much like a two stroke, yet still retains multiple throttle modes. If you're the type of rider who wants the ultimate in quick handling and likes to use your body to manipulate the sled as you ride, the 850 is going to be the best choice for you. Simply put, it is lighter and it feels lighter than the turbo. Therefore, it enjoys all the benefits that come with lighter weight, like incredibly snappy handling, fast acceleration, and the ability to make it do what you want it to simply by moving your body around the sled. Which one do I like better? That is a really difficult question to answer because I really like both and I'd choose one over the other depending on the circumstances. 
If you're a high-speed, big-mile rider, someone who likes riding in places like Quebec or Northern Ontario, where the trails are wider with fast-sweeping corners, the Turbo is definitely going to do exactly what you want and need it to. It's the one I'd choose in those types of riding scenarios. On the other hand, if you're a ditch banger, love to carve twisties, or someone who likes to involve your whole body in the ride, the 850 is gonna suit how you ride better, and it's the one I would choose in those scenarios. Whichever one you do choose, you can be confident you're getting the best suspension technology the industry currently has to offer, legendary Skidoo build quality, and all the extra strength and cool factor that comes with the Renegade XRS package. One of the biggest questions we've been asked this season, and one of the ones we want answered more than anything else is, which is faster? Skidoo's new Ace 900 Turbo R or Yamaha slash Arctic Cats Genesis Turbo Motor? And today, we are gonna answer that question. 98.69. Yeah. 96 is what yours said. 102. What? To find out which sled actually was fastest, make sure you check out the full feature online.